Hello sleuths, my name is Lonevik, and today on my channel in the Honest Talk series we are talking about, yes, Detective City of Angels. In this series of videos I am talking about my subjective and honest opinion about games that I like and sometimes don't like, which are on my shelf, arrived there accidentally, through Kickstarter or through any other means, I've played a few times and I'm ready to share my honest opinion about and the detective City of Angels has been on the back burner for such a long time to be made into a how to play video, a solo playthrough, a review and everything else that I just finally got round to it and it's been a long time coming. As you can see the mood is set, hopefully at least a bit, and we can talk about this game in detail. If you like the content that I'm providing here on my channel and you would like to support what I'm doing here, you can always click the like button under the video, hit the subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified about new videos coming to my channel on a regular basis. And if you feel like it, you can go down to the link in the description to the video to buy me a cup of joe. And now let's talk about the good things that I can say about Detective the City of Angels, a game from Van Ryder Games. I've always been a fan of the noir films and computer games. I loved L.A. Noir from Rockstar, I loved the Mafia series. I like it all. I like the atmosphere, I like the mood, I like the whodunit kind of detective stories, I like the gangsters and the prohibition and all of those, you know, this, this feeling of the 1920s, 30s, 40s, my favorite adventure games on the computer in the past, in a long, long time ago, was Jack Orlando, which was for me the epitome of a point and click set in those times. And I've been hoping and I've been looking for a game for a very long time that would fill this gap when it comes to this narrative and story experience that would take me on the table into the 1930s or 40s and give me the things that those computer games and the movies gave me. And Detective City of Angels is definitely it. And I don't know what I can say positive about, about this game after such a strong introduction, but let's try. First things first. It's all about the narrative here. It's a one versus all game in which one player is called the Chisel and they have this book of solutions for all the cases. And in the core box, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cases that you can solve. And the Chisel is like the game master for any other narrative role playing game. And up to four detectives can sit around the table racing to solve the case first based on the clues that they gather from searching locations, searching the suspect's pockets, questioning the suspects. And the chisel is there to lie and misdirect and throw them off the track and prevent them from solving the case. Because if they don't solve the case after a specific amount of days runs out and the case goes cold, the chisel wins. So it's a game of wits. It's a game of connecting the dots, of collecting facts, there is a lot of note-taking. You even have a special grid provided with the game for taking notes about suspects and about evidence and how they fit into the whole story that you are doing in the game, that you are solving in the game. And it's a very interactive game. So the biggest plus, I think, is the narrative and the kind of mood which pits this one player against four. Sure, you can play in a co-op mode without the chisel present, or you can even play solo where the game is doing the work of the chisel, but the most pleasure is being derived from having this one player behind this optional purchase of a chisel player screen. Look at the cool graphics on this. So you're right now, I look like a real game master, right? And then pitting this chisel against those four detectives in a battle of wits is brilliant. The other good thing is that mechanically this game is exactly what you want it to be. 
You move around the board, you move around the city, you search locations, you question suspects, you try to catch them on a lie based on what you know and what you expect them of. You collect leverage against those suspects that you can use later on to coax them into giving answers. You spend money to bribe informants or to bribe other detectives into revealing evidence. You collect pieces of evidence and uncover more and more pieces of the puzzle and each case has some specific mechanics that can twist this game around a bit one game that we played had a riddle a rhyming poem that was pointing us in different directions on the map and you really had to look at the locations around the map to figure out what the poem means and where to go in order to solve the case there are different twists and to, to the story that give you a real sense of satisfaction. The stories are well written as well and they play very well separately as separate cases but there is through a few of those stories there is an overarching narrative and a few characters kind of repeat themselves in different places in those different stories sometimes as suspects sometimes as culprits and sometimes as the murder victims and if you're playing those stories in sequence from the easiest to the most difficult you will get kind of this sense of an overarching plot somewhere there in the background but it's cool that it is there now also this game isn't in my opinion limited to only four detectives now i've led a game as the chisel in which we had four pairs of detectives so eight players around the table so eight players around the table basically and those pairs were whispering and analyzing evidence together discussing what their next move should be and everybody was enjoying themselves the downtime is very little here as well because when one detective is going somewhere to ask a question to question a suspect the other detectives have to be attentive because based on the question that is asked they can decide whether they want to bribe a snitch in order to find out what that question was if they can afford the bribe that is and that's great because the there is no feeling that oh, okay this is somebody else's turn they are asking questions so now we can just you know wait until we can do something here no you have to be attentive you have to look at what the others are doing because there are clues in what other people are asking and what other people are searching for to kind of help you you know move forward a bit especially if you are stuck somewhere so it is a very very satisfying experience and i can't say enough good about it really there are two expansions as you can see here on my left side and on the screen is probably your right side this is the smoke and mirrors and bullets over hollywood which each gives I think four new cases for you to solve with another set of different mechanics and different twists that set it up to be a very original experience every single time you sit at the table and this is great and Van Ryder some time ago said that they are not going to go down the route of big box expansions anymore for this game but they are going to be publishing separate cases that will be purchasable so check out their shop I've seen one new case right now that's not in any of those boxes but hopefully there will be others but it's still enough content there are nine cases here in front of me on the table right now eight additional ones that's 17 cases that you can go through with a single group that's 17 separate playthrough sessions in this game and this is really cool now talking about the drawbacks of this game i think the strongest one in this case from the not so good category is that once you've done a story once you've done a case as a detective or as the chisel the replayability level for you limits only to being the chisel again with a new group because even if you were the detective and you didn't manage to solve the story or nobody managed to and the chisel didn't even tell you the results in the end then going back to the story you already know some things you already know some facts and it's becoming easier and easier for the detectives to win and for the chisel more difficult to win in this case so each of those stories for a specific group of players 
will be a one shot, I think. It's still 17 different stories if you have all the expansions like I do because I'm a fan. But then again, on the other hand, one can say that it's only 17 stories. But if you're playing with different groups, and if you, for example, want to play cooperatively later after some time without the chisel, there are different approaches to that. And, you know, you won't remember those stories probably after a year or two. So you can get back to this game. But, well, the replayability level is discussable in this case. The second thing that is a bit of a drawback is with the questioning me mechanic, when you're questioning the suspects, the mechanic of the most useful answer is in the beginning very difficult to wrap your head around. Because it's not like the most useful answer is always going to be the truth, because somebody always know something. Sometimes the most useful answer is just, I don't know anything. Because that person you are questioning really doesn't know anything and they're not lying, but you have to be able to predict that. You have to be able to analyze and figure this out. So it is a bit difficult sometimes with some questions and with some answers to kind of get a feel of it. But apart from that, it's pretty solid and it gives you a very good experience of interviewing witnesses. This grid that you are given to take notes, in our experience, after playing a few games, definitely too small. Everybody had a notepad with them, writing down all the details, who asked what, and who had what facial expression when getting the answer, and who was challenging, and what was connected to what, and who said this, and who said that. This is the bare minimum of what you need, right? Uh, to, to take notes in the game. The game is definitely English language dependent. So now if all the players around the table are not fluent in English or at least advanced in English to understand the language here, because the language is set in the times that the game is in. So there is a lot of slang, there are a lot of expressions, uh, you know, which were originally used in those days. It's well, very well written, but for non-native speakers, this might be a hurdle. So you have to be aware of that as well. And I think that's it. I can't really complain about this game. And like I said, those videos are subjective opinions of mine. And sometimes I'm so positively biased about the game that I can't say anything bad. I tried here, as you can see, I found a few not so good things, but for me, to sum up, this, not only in the noir category, this is one of the best, if not the best, narrative experiences I whip up on the table from time to time. I love solving those cases. I love being the chisel and watching the people figure out whether I'm lying or whether I'm misdirecting them or whether I'm telling the truth finally and, you know, holding the poker face and having the satisfaction of outsmarting somebody or then saying, kudos, you've figured me out and you've solved the case despite me trying to prevent you from it. It's a very satisfying experience. If you ask the question whether this game is similar to the detective game from Ignacy Trevicek, the one from Portal Games, uh, I would say no, because that, that game has a narrative which you are going through. There are a few cases that are connected and you are going through a narrative, uncovering cards. There is a lot more reading than in this game, and there is a lot more note-taking and a lot more analysis maybe than in this game, but this game is larger when it comes to the scope. You've got more cases, you have more replayability to it. Although you're playing one case once only, probably, with the same group. But Detective, the other one, once you finish the game, you're done. You don't want to go back to it anymore because you don't have any incentive to. You know the story and that's it. Here, you can at least have a different group of players and you can play as the chisel and challenge them. And you can solve the same case with three or four different groups of players and be the chisel and still have fun. So you can go back to this game even knowing the case in the role of the chisel. So there is more replayability to this. And the setting, I think, is denser and a bit more, like, maybe because I'm a fan of noir, but still. So 
this is basically it. So watch out for the language hurdle because you need to have some proficiency level in English in order to enjoy this game fully. Remember about the risk of the replayability and the amount of cases in this case in this game. The availability of this game is also pretty limited. So if you want to find it, well, good luck. And if you find it, good job, to be honest. It's worth it, but it can be pretty tricky to find. And well, that's it from me, I think. I'll be wrapping this video up. My name was Lone Vic. This was Detective City of Angels, the, let me state it once again, the best noir narrative experience on a board gaming table that I've ever seen. And one of my favorite top 10 games, top three probably even, that I have in my collection, especially when it comes to the narrative. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you enjoyed it, if you want to support what I'm doing here and help the channel grow, like button under the video, subscribe and notification bell to be notified about new videos that are coming to my channel on a regular basis. And if you feel like it, you can always buy me a cup of joe through the link in the description to this video. And for now, thank you for watching. Once again, Detective City of Angels from Van Ryder Games, Lone Vic, stay safe, have a great day, goodbye.